this week. Uh, I guess this this kind of started trickling in December. Uh, I think it was like December 15th. I was going through my notes to see when I was told about MJF, you know, maybe maybe wanting to, or, or interest in MJF. And it was probably mid-December. Somebody at one of the networks that, that I'm pretty friendly with over a couple of drinks was like, hey, uh, and, and the words that he used, I can't say on the radio. But he was like, hey, that that guy, uh, he's super impressive. What's his deal? When does his contract end? I hope that, you know, I would love to see him on WWE TV. And I, I brought this up to somebody over there and it was the same exact answer. You know, he's super talented. He's young. He is, uh, he has that look. He has the charisma. He's everything that they would want. And now the story is kind of manifesting itself. Per Fightful, a uh, friend of mine, Sean Ross Sapp reports, he is leaning towards leaving AEW when the deal is up. During the heated April discussion with AEW's head Tony Khan, MJF was, uh, MJF was said, and I quote, wasn't happy about his contract situation and the pay scale. This was after he did that interview with Ariel Helwani. He still he still has two years left on this five year deal. A little premature to talk about his deal. What do you think? Yeah, so I've always thought about this. You know, obviously he's a guy who WWE would target because he's so good. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find a better heel in the business than MJF. But I wonder a lot about how he would fit into that WWE system. You know, like how much freedom would they give him on the microphone? Because that's what makes him so good. You yeah. know, he's very edgy. Would they allow him to push the envelope on WWE television? So that's one factor to me. He, the guy's so talented. If you give him some freedom, I have no doubt he would succeed in WWE. You know, and, and uh, none, but, what, what, here's the other thing, right? You're talking about his charisma and his personality. So am I. Mm -hmm. His in-ring is great, too. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, and and he's really good in the ring. He's a fantastic heel in the ring. Like nothing wrong with it. I I, I watch his matches and I'm and I'm always impressed. He's always fantastic. Uh, I I saw probably one of his first matches on, on some indie in Long Island that I that, that I was that I was working on. This is a guy that is so good as a character. We don't even emphasize his his how good he is in the ring, right? Yeah, yeah. Brian Myers trained him, right? So your neck yeah. of the woods, right there. Long uh, Island boy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, his personality is just larger than life. And so that's what you notice most of all. But yeah, his in-ring work is is top-notch too. So you got that. You mentioned he's got two years left on his deal. What's going to be interesting is, look, AEW is, has made some stars in their short history. And some of these guys are going to have to get paid. And, and women are going to have to get paid. And that's going to be around the time that their cable contracts come and do with TNT too. So you look at AEW and, and what kind of money they're going to be able to get from Turner or potentially another network moving forward and how that factors into the negotiations that they're going to have to have. Uh, but I, you know, you look at MJF and what he's doing here, you can look at it two ways. It's really smart on his part because we have these other options out there. Now, you, two competitive national promotions, this is to the benefit of every worker in the industry. At the same time, I know the reports have kind of fluctuated about what's going on with him and Tony, is this real? Is it a negotiating ploy? Um, you know, will this factor into how he's booked in AEW moving forward? Because I think everybody has assumed he's a future world champion with AEW. They got a lot of lot of guys that could be world champion. Listen, you know, Cody so we'll was see what Cody was Cody was assumed as well, right? Every nobody right. nobody saw that coming. It really uh, some of the details about about this. Uh, it, it's so amazing to me. And uh, Cody expressed a lot of it on that Steve Austin interview he did, which I thought was a fantastic two-hour interview with, with Steve. But, you know, I don't think anybody assumed or, or would have had that in their 2022 uh, prediction lineup that Cody Rhodes is going to leave AEW to go back to WWE and be positioned as their top babyface in the company. That wasn't, a, <laughs> that wasn't a card that anybody had. But for MJF, I would say... I don't, this is my own opinion, right? And, and some of this is maybe drawn up with what other people have told me. I don't think it's this MJF is leaving for sure scenario, right? He wants the best possible deal. He knows that this is the way to do it. WWE kind of enjoys uh, the, WWE, I shouldn't say in kind of, they 100% they enjoy the back and forth and the turmoil with these deals for AEW and anything that's going to cost Tony more money is a positive for them, even if they're not interested or they are. 
I don't know, two years is a long time, but here's the interesting thing here, right? And, and you cover this all the time as well. AEW has a very short window of opportunity left for this contract negotiation. The deal obviously is over in 2024, right? Uh, what is it? November 2024, the deal's up. They have mm -hmm. two and a half years or so left on this. By the fourth quarter, they're going to have to do a full court press. Fourth quarter, first quarter to get these numbers up even higher than they are and really solidify these stars on TV to get, you know, whatever. I think Brandon Thurston uh, put out a post saying something like $140 million. I, I, I'm t I could be filling in the blanks here. But he brought up like $140 million value or $120 million value. Right now, they're around $48 million in TV rights fees, which is very low. And the mm -hmm. landscape is changing constantly for TV rights fees. But I don't see them going down with uh, re-signing with Turner. You know, I don't see that happening. They've lost some allies, obviously, with the restructuring of that company. But it, I don't think they're, they're in jeopardy of being canceled whatsoever. No, it's hard to imagine. I mean, just from their 18 to 49 ranking every single week, you know, top 10, top five, consistent, reliable programming that ranks that high on, on cable television. I, I I, don't think that they're going to be in any danger. But yeah, those numbers are going to be really, really interesting because it's going to play so heavily into the future of the company. These new stars they're building, like an MJF, with the contracts come and do, how much money can they offer them? Because you know, from WWE's side, you know, their, their pocketbooks are deep and they've got a global platform that for all of AEW's success is much larger. And, you know, it's a feather in their cap to sign some of these people away. And you got to imagine signing an MJF. I mean, that's near the top of the list. They got an EVP. They got Cody. Right now, if they can get an MJF, that's huge.